Hey Integrity family, this is Bud. Uh, I hope you're with us this past Sunday. Uh, we went through an interview with Alberto Leva, our uh, missionary in Nicaragua. And I want to give you a little bit of uh, background maybe before we show you uh, in this film that video, or excuse me, that interview in its entirety. Uh, Alberto has been in Nicaragua all of his life, kind of had a tough upbringing came to Christ at a later age in his life, was actually challenged by a couple of our friends, one of whom Billy Summers and Jeff Price, to take on this ministry after he became a follower of Jesus. The ministry being called Youth for Christ, a parachurch ministry that is geared toward young people. Alberto has been leading that ministry now for about 16 years serving hundreds and hundreds of young people, helping them understand English, helping them train for their vocations, but most of all, familiarizing them with the gospel and leading them to Christ. So these years have seen a lot of great fruit. And so now Alberto is responding to a call on a from the Lord that's going to bring a shift in his life and in the ministry. And we're proud to be a part of that, just as we've been a part of the past 16 years. We've sent mission teams and we've done, uh, we've been privileged to do a number of things in order to help assist him in that ministry. And so now he's going to plant a church. And the church is going to be uh, linked up with the Youth for Christ ministry. So as he's been serving young people, many of whom have grown uh, and they have families of their own now, uh, this church is going to be focused on serving the families in Esteli, Nicaragua. We're excited to see what's going to happen with this. We've got uh, a mission team going down, going down in a couple months. Um, and so it's very important, I think, that you understand what's going on down there with Alberto and know that your your faithfulness and your generosity in supporting the mission fund of Integrity Church here during the month of April uh, is uh, and, and what you're going to be doing on a monthly basis in terms of that generosity. Join me uh, in providing for the work that is going on there as well as with Jim Machuca in Eswatini with Stephen Canis Crothers in uh, Honduras and Vitaly Smolin over in the Ukraine. So enjoy this interview that uh, we had on Sunday morning with our good friend Alberto Leva from Esteli, Nicaragua. We are blessed to have uh, live and in person from the country of Nicaragua, the legendary, the legendary Alberto Leva. Alberto, come on up. We have been with, Alberto has been with us. We have been with him forever. Right? And that's a good thing. That's the way it seems, right, my friend? That's it. Yeah. That's it. So um, I, I've asked Alberto to come, and, and uh, he, he's going to be here, I guess, for another two or three weeks, right, in the States? Yeah, two more weeks. Uh, and you've already been here, like, a, a uh, while. I, I arrived to the United States on March 28th. Yeah. And I came uh, to North Carolina and staying in Roxborough. Okay, good. And wife Minerva, she doing okay back home? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is she encouraging you to stay longer here, or uh, well, what? Uh, uh, no, well, she, she really misses. As a matter of fact, you know, um, this uh, coming Thursday is our anniversary. 28, oh, how many years? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight years. Twenty-eight yeah. years. So 28 Let's give it up for Minerva. This is, yeah. And this is the, the, the first time that we're going to celebrate it from the distance. Oh, okay. But you'll still celebrate it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We That's still good. celebrate it. That's oh. good. So Alberto has been, um, we have been friends of his and we've been supporters of the ministry of Youth for Christ in Esteli, Nicaragua uh, for a fairly long time, a lengthy time. And um, Pastor Ray uh, and a few of the other folks are headed down that way, about eight of us, right? Is yeah. that right? Are yes. headed, headed that way in about uh, uh, six weeks or so, something like that, Ray? Something like that, right? Uh, June 19th, June 19th. Whatever that turns out to be, uh, two two months. In two, two months. Two months, basically, right? And um, so, our 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 history with with you, right? Kind of go back in time, if you would, uh, to 1947 when you and Billy <laughs> Summers first became good friends. Can you do that, right? <laughs> well, it's uh, 
It really was uh, 16 years uh, ago that we started this relationship through you, uh, uh, through uh, De uh, Debbie and, um, and, and Bill Summers. You know? Right. That's how we, we started, and good to have Jeff. When I met them, you know. The, yeah, the, in, well, in, in, you in, think in, it's in good Bolivia. to have Jeff, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> in, in Bolivia, and, and then he's, he, was, he was really good. And then a couple of years, uh, when we started the relationship, they come to Nicaragua. Uh, I had a chance to come to uh, for the first time and, and start uh, this relationship with Integrity Church. And, and that's when Jeff and Billy, and they kind of do, really had a business together, really. And they yes. were, it was kind of like that kind of worked out well for, for everybody involved, right? They would come mm -hmm. and. Yeah, they, uh, and as a matter of fact, I was there. I remember that I took my, uh, a flight to Bolivia from Managua, and I said to my wife that I, I didn't feel like. I was the, 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 the person, you know, to, to do ministry there. And I, I felt so disappointed with myself. I, I didn't but but why did do. you say that? Well, you, what, what, why did you feel that you were not the person to do ministry there? It, it is because, you know, I, um, um, most, um, I came to, to uh, Christianity, you know, when I was 26 years old. And it was really hard for me because uh, I came from a... Uh, uh, a kind of indoctrination. I, I, I grew up in Nicaragua back in the 80s was a socialist communist country. Right. And, and of course, as kids and then as young people, we were uh, taught, you know, that God existence was not real. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and somehow, like, uh, uh, as many people uh, rejected that idea, I somehow I embraced it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I made it part of my life. So uh, I grew up, you know, hating everything about Christianity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and then when God finally touched my heart through some friends while I was serving time in a maximum security prison, and, and then I, I, I was released, uh, I, I thought that being a Christian was kind of easy. Mm -hmm. And I realized that mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know. So, and somehow I felt so bad. It was my second year uh, as a Christian. I, I don't want to be just uh, sitting and I wanted to do something for, for, for my people, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to. So I, I, I said to my wife, uh, I don't know, it, it's not easy to get to the people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Bolivia and say to the friends that they, they were investing in me in, in the Youth for Christ ministry and say, I'm not the man, look for someone right. else. Mm -hmm. So that's when I met uh, Tim, Billy, and, and Jeff, and I was sitting on that table. They came to that table and say, hey, we're from North Carolina. I didn't know where North Carolina was. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they say, here we are to, to help you. God is calling us to go to, to Nicaragua, so what are we going to do? And in my mind was, I'm here to, to resign. <laughs> but, but, you know, but the way they said to me, it's like my, everything, you know, came back in my mind. Yeah, we that, they messed up your plans. Yeah, the nerve of you guys, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and so God spoke through them, and yeah. So, so you for, you for Christ and Esteli was born. Right? Yeah, and that, and that's and then we uh, since then we've been doing um, uh, sixteen years until this year, sixteen years, you know, in an outreach program. And the uh, mission and vision of the Youth for Christ is to work with the local church. Mm -hmm. And so along the years we have been. Uh, uh, sending, you know, or helping, you know, the the, the local church to, with, with all the kid, all the kids, and uh, you have come uh, to Nicaragua in the last ten years, right? And and then you uh, you as a mission have witnessed, you know, that those kids that they, they were maybe uh, some of them were in middle school or some of them were seniors in that time. Now they are families, right? And they they, yeah. they 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 have been part of the church the church for that long time until. Uh, back to 2018 when I was here telling you my the, the story about what's going on in Nicaragua and the story history you know is we're living it again and we are now we still we're back you know in a socialist communist yeah. authoritarian government right now that is persecuting everything that is against against them and uh, regrettably, you know, most of the local church have aligned with the government, yeah. The, yeah. The, the evangelical, not the Catholic. The Catholic has been the one that uh, has has stood against the government, and they ha they are paying the price because the government has taken from them all their charities, facilities, schools, universities. Mm -hmm. All they have is just the cathedrals, you mm -hmm. know, in their churches, in the, in the communities. But, and, but, and, they, and they've expelled 280. And, and 284 uh, priests have been expelled from Nicaragua. Yeah. Most of them Nicaraguans. And, they, uh, and once they, they left the country, so the, the government took away their nationality. So they're right. not Nicaraguans anymore. The same happened with the political 
um, uh, opposition. Most of them are here in, in the United States after they serve uh, two, uh, at least a couple of years you know, in prison. Mm -hmm. So once they landed here in the United States, the same thing happened. I'm, we're talking about uh, uh, 300 politicians, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know what their status in the United States because they are not Nicaraguan anymore, too, right. according to the law there. Right. And, uh, and I know that they cannot apply even for uh, uh, residence or, right. or uh, citizenship here. Yeah, it's a sad state. And, and what happens when, when the church decides to align with the government Right, man well, made the, government, right? Yeah, uh, they're paying the price right now. So you see that uh, as m many people are leaving because of the, the, this political, social, and economical situation is getting worse. So many people have left the country. 1.6 yeah. million so far. Yeah. 700,000 are here in the United States because the United States, in, in a way to help Nicaragua, they uh, granted what you call a humanitarian parole. Mm -hmm. So they look for a sponsor. Now, humanitarian here. parole. Yeah, parole. And, parole. and, and okay. this, they you look for a sponsor and 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 someone uh, fill out the forms and, and once the, you're approved, so you are allowed to come mm -hmm. into into the United States. So mm -hmm. that's been happening the last two years, and is going to be one more year according to the State Department. Okay. Just for Nicaragua, so, so more than seven hundred thousand are right are now. Are in the United States. States. And the State Department says that one of, out of, of four Nicaraguans are professional. And okay. it's true because we most of the professionals are leaving the country. They're the ones. So what's what? Uh, <clears throat> so what's happening with the local church about it? So they're paying the price because most of the people are leaving the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now because of loss of faith. But for two things: one is aligning with the government, and second, because uh, I now that I've been in this uh, two weeks, you know, learning about mm -hmm. the, the transition, we are going to go in the ministry right now is is that they have failed you know to make disciples right. and, and 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 the people uh, don't want to continue going to the church in the, in the, in that way so 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 the country is many countries have discovered over time and down through history and by the way our country as well experiencing learning this right now is when that church gives in to the authority, oh, not the authority, but but rather the leanings, the teachings, the the trends, right, yeah. of the government, uh, the church becomes ineffective. It becomes irrelevant, basically. It's not relevant anymore uh, because people say, well, uh, I can just go to my club or I can do this or I can just go to a government-type thing and I get the same thing as what I get at church. So... So that is the backdrop of what's going on in Nicaragua. Like you said, again, with, against the socialist regime when you were growing up, the, the social, here's, here's the thing to remember, y'all. Socialism and Christianity, and Christianity cannot coexist. You do realize that. When you hear the term socialism, you are hearing an economic and political system that is godless, that you inject if you inject the character of God, of Jesus, into the system, it blows the system up. And so in order for the system to work, it has to oppress the, the, the voice of God, the voice of Christianity, uh, to, to, to silence, basically, or expulsion, like what, what we're talking about. So, um, so that's kind of where we are now. You, you all, you minister now. Youth for Christ is the organization that... that uh, that that Alberto and his lovely bride Minerva lead, and right now, and, and that's not a church. That is a parachurch organization, which means it is an organization that has church-like uh, aspirations, if you will. But for the most part, it works alongside the church. Now, how many kids right now uh, do you would you say that you all? minister to on a fairly regular basis if you uh, were to we have uh yesterday uh it, they come usually on saturday because they go to uh school elementary school uh -huh. and uh we have uh 72 75 but because this year uh as i plan my coming here so i i, I haven't opened you know the doors for the ministry but every year when we uh open so more kids are coming mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. by the time i think the the mission team is there in june so it could be maybe a hundred or more than a hundred. And, and down through the years, people kind of come and go based on their age, right? Yeah. But you've had well over a hundred before at any given point in time. Yeah, usually we have, but you know, what? we could have more. But as I said, many people are leaving our country. Right. And uh, many kids that we used to have, uh, uh, 
we, we, we used to have attending, you know, our program last year. So some of them are now here in the United States or Costa Rica or in Spain. One of the things that was really cool when we came in 2017 was we had a team of about, I don't know, 15, 16 folks. And you, you and your team had arranged for us to go into, we, we did six different things while we were there, right? Yeah. Our teachers went into the public schools and yeah. they trained teachers in the public schools. Um, we, did, uh, we did some of our students, actually, I think some of our younger people actually helped with English learning classes. Uh, we, we worked, you and I worked with pastors, right, and did some leadership development. Some of our folks worked with couples and families. So we, you had us doing like six different things, right? Yeah, but this time the mission team will be able to do four. So, okay. But because uh, right now, because of the government uh, regulations, so we cannot go into the public school what we used to. Right. And that's something that the, the mission team is, is, is going to miss this time. Right. And, uh, and of course, the kids too, because they sure. used to. to to uh, work with the mission teams there in mm -hmm. the, the big, big schools. Mm -hmm. and, and the other is with the pastors. Uh, every time that you are in Nicaragua, I love, you know, to gather pastors so they can have a, at least one day training, you know, with you. But right. because what's happening is, is, is hard to say right now, you know, who, what, what church is aligning with the government, what is not. So, and I don't want to be involved in the transition right now that I have, mm -hmm. because that's why people are leaving the church, because they don't want to do anything with the government, and mm -hmm. they know that the government somehow is controlling most of the evangelical churches through the big associations there. One of the things we're going to talk about this morning is the fact that God, God works and speaks through circumstances. So the circumstances that we find in Nicaragua, the church is basically, as a whole, is becoming pretty ineffective. And so, because of the alignment with the government, um, God is calling you to move from a parachurch youth ministry to plant a church. To p say that a little bit louder, hold it up. Okay, to plant a church. Okay, to plant a church. The thing that Alberto has thought over the years, he did not want Youth for Christ to come because of where the nation is and where the state of Christianity is in the nation. Uh, God has made it clear that the next step is to plant a church, yeah. right? And so that is what's going to be happening. That's what our team, when they come in in a couple, in a couple of months, is going to be helping you with, yeah. right? And uh, you and I had some conversations about that, and you and Billy are, are you know, you're, you're preparing for this, this launching of a, a new church in Nicaragua that is not going to sell out no. to the government <laughs> stuff. No. So, how are you feeling about that? I mean, nervous, nervous, and uh, nervous, and um, challenge, challenge about it, about that. But at the same time, excited. Um, I'm here, uh, and the reason I came here is to because I want to make a difference. Yeah. In the last uh, couple of weeks, two two days ago, talking to you, that short conversation from eight in the morning to two o'clock. <laughs> you know, so it was, that is it short was, for me yeah, and for yeah. you and I. Put both yeah. of us together. That's, was, that's a it, short it, conversation. It was really encouraging, you know, because <laughs> you made me see some things about. And uh, and and when I get back, you know, it's it's not only about us. You know, planting the church. It, as I said, it's not all the evangelical church. There are a few pastors. Right. That they really want to to follow. You know biblical principles, but they don't have the same opportunity that I have right now. So we want to be a resource for them to, so we can help and we can work together and be uh, impacting ministry. But be they, have a, they have a name for you, right? What, what is it that they call they, you? They, they call me the teacher. Everywhere the teacher. Where, I, where I go in, 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 in my hometown, uh, 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 everyone say, hi, teacher, the teacher. Uh, but some people in the last two or three years, uh, they have called me pastor. And I say, I'm not a pastor. And this is because... La Last time, you know, you were there, and you do the, the pastoral training. Remember, uh, two weeks after you left, the One Nation One Day was there. And then I had to translate in the main event in the stadium. And this was a huge, you feel the oh, whole stadium. Oh, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was more than 40,000 people 40,000 people, yeah. More than 40,000. And then I remember the pastor said to me, you, uh, when I told my story, that I learned English when I was a teenager, and I said, I want to come to the United States, make a lot of money, and things like that. No, uh -huh. doing ministry. And uh, I didn't believe in God in that time. And, and then he said, well, God made you, you know, learn this language because what you're going to do tonight, no matter how feel I am in the spirit right now, 
your people are not going to understand anything until you open your mouth. So this is your time. Yeah. So we uh, somehow we felt connected. Yeah. You know, and I was yeah. it was like me preaching, you know, to four, more than forty thousand people yeah. there translating. And and as this man was excited, you know, and fire, and he was shouting, I had to do the same. So after that, you know, people people <laughs> people uh, started calling me, and and uh, and just a few days, people. Uh, run across me and on the street, and they say, "Hey, Pastor, what you say was really touched me." No, I was translating. <laughs> <laughs> and they pastor, and the people calling me, you know, pastor, and I, and I, and I be, and you know, and that's uh, uh, denial. For yeah, many, de- many we're all, years, we're all in denial about something, yeah, right? All and, of us and, are. And, and, and say it, and and, and, I, and I'm still, you know, like uh, I said, my friend Timbos when I came here and say, "Why me?" There are mm-hmm. many good people there, and there are many, you know, that I know God can raise. Even the kids, you know, I'm training, they can be better than me in the future. And, and, yeah. and, and Tim said, the way he is, he's tough. I said, you're stupid. Why you ask? <laughs> why, you, why you say, why me? You sure it wouldn't be and your and say, and say, and say, yeah. ask this question. You are going to have that different answer. Why? Why not? Why not? And yeah, then I said, go. okay, okay, I want to listen to you say, and I say, why not? No, no, say it. Why not? Mm-hmm. Okay, what's the answer? Oh, that's a, that's yeah. a you get a point, right? Yeah. One of the things I know, this thing about pastor, you know, you, you, the first thing you, you got to remember is you're just a guy. That's the, that's the first qualification of a good pastor. Just remember it. You're just <laughs> a guy. When, we, when, when you lose sight of that, that's when it all goes downhill, yeah. you know? I mean, it may not look like it goes downhill, but it does, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so next steps, we're going to be seeing this start. We're going to be um, helping you, uh, not only the mission team. We're going to be helping you from afar. We're recruiting some people, maybe with some translation and that kind of stuff, yeah. some of our resources to kind of help uh, give you some things that are going to allow you to now begin to ministering more intentionally to whole families, right? Yeah. Mother, father, sister, brother, Aunts, yeah, that's, uncles, that, grandparents. That, that, that's the way I see it. You know, as I said, look at that. The 20 years have gone so fast. And yeah. 16 years since you, uh, Billy, you arrived there to Nicaragua. And now he witnessed kids this size. And right. now they introduced to Billy. This <laughs> They're is taller Billy. than Billy, right? Yeah, they're taller than Billy. And at the same time, look, Billy, this is my, this is my daughter. This is my son. This is my, my youngest. So yeah. at least they have two or three kids. You yeah. know, they're coming. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, we, uh, we appreciate that, uh, all your support over the years, especially in the last uh, five years since uh, the radical changes started in, in Nicaragua. Uh, you cannot imagine with uh, the, the, the prayer, the love, and the, the, the money you have sent, you have helped a lot of people, mm-hmm. especially with the pandemics. Mm-hmm. We, we could fed m- more than 40 families. Mm. You know, because they lost yeah. their job, uh, some of them passed away, and most of them they've been loyal. You know, and being in the ministry, serving uh, as volunteers for five, six, seven, eight years, and we cannot leave them alone. Right. And that's something that I I, I kept in touch with with Billy uh, because I know it was hard for for me to to come to United States because of the pandemic, and, and the same for uh, for you. Mm. But we uh, through the media, you know, uh, platforms and uh, phone, we had the chance to continue having this, this, this relationship. Mm. And, uh, yeah. and I really thank you from the bottom of, of, of my heart. And, uh, and uh, we all, my, my wife, my kids, and all the volunteers there, uh, we really appreciate what you have been doing. I, and though I'm nervous, you know, but at the same time, thank you for making me feel home because I feel home here. Yeah, good. I'm glad you yeah. did. Yeah, you were boogieing it's, back there it's, a little it's bit. Like, so um, I was watching you were boogieing. Yeah, when, music, I, when, you know, I, when yeah. I, uh, yeah. When B- Billy picked me up at the at Roxborough, so yeah. we hugged. Yeah. We, I saw him last year, but we hugged, you know, like uh, we hadn't seen him for a, a century, like oh, you say. Yeah. You know? So it was, really, it was really good. And see some familiar faces here and that I really missed. And last night that I had a chance to meet the, the team that is coming to, right. uh, to Nicaragua. Yeah. It was really good. So That's uh, great. We, we really had a good time. Yesterday. So you know what you're getting. We're sending you a lot of great, <laughs> capable people, right? And they're going to yes. make things happen down there. Yeah, That's it, a great it, group. It, and, and I told them that as it's going to be a short uh, visit to Nicaragua. Even my wife, when I said they're coming on Wednesday, but they have to go to Managua on, 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 on Sunday. And she said, what? <laughs> Let them stay you know, longer. It's, right? it's like just four days. And I said, I said last night, uh, Okay, I think as soon as you get up, you're going to be very, very busy all day long. Yeah, 
for sure. One of the things as we close, uh, just as, as this transition comes upon you and you start this church, God used you to launch this church, uh, something that you and Billy and I were talking about uh, Friday in my office, uh, the realization we kind of mentioned to you, um, that really you're not just now starting a church. You've been working, you launched the church 16 years ago. It's just that now Youth for Christ right, is going to morph into Youth for Christ plus mm -hmm. a church, right, that is going to have overlapping yeah, that, that's organizational okay. responsibilities and ties. So uh, he's, you've already, you already started it. Okay. Yeah, you, and I, is, I didn't see it that way until I, I had this conversation because I was thinking that I need to leave this to start this. Yeah. So that was like a burden because even the board, in uh, Youth for Christ board in Nicaragua was telling me, you cannot leave us just yeah. like that. Yeah. And yeah. uh, we, we, we really need you. And I said, I'm not going to leave you, but I, I need, you need to think, you know, about in the transition. But uh, Friday, when you talk to me about the overlapping, so I, 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 really, I really see this with different eyes. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking forward to seeing how that goes and being part of that. All right? Yeah. Thank you. Love you, my friend. Yeah. Let's give it up for Alberto Leva. All right? <laughs> Thank you. Our good friend.